A sluggish interface cripples productivity in animation. When playback starts to look like a slideshow, it becomes harder to judge the timing of motion in any meaningful capacity. This is why most 3D programs give users a means of reducing the amount of detail that shows. In Lightwave, for example, you can reduce the number of polygons that display on your characters, hide props and backgrounds, lower the texture threshold, and so forth. But what if you're in bounding box mode with everything turned off and details turned to their lowest settings and things are still running slowly? How the hell can you improve performance when you've already explored all the built-in options available? Well, that's what this tutorial is about. Here, I'm going to outline just some of the techniques I use to get layout running as fast as possible so that I can animate as fast as possible. Some of these options are not the most convenient to utilize, but the results can mean the difference between useless stuttering and real-time smooth. If you got a slow computer like I do, or you're doing some really detailed work, then this tutorial will really help you out. Place complex animated elements in their own scene. When working on character animation or detailed motion, isolating what you were working on to be in its own scene will keep Lightwave playing back smoothly. The reason for this is the fact that even with IK turned off, the object disabled, hidden, etc., that object, even though it's dormant, will still slow down Lightwave's interface to some degree. For characters and animated props, unless they are directly interacting with one another or they have to be visible, there is no reason to have them all loaded into the scene at once. So, by creating a copy of your main scene file and suffixing it with your character or object's name, then deleting everything except for what needs to be animated, you can get much better responsiveness when moving stuff around. When finished with the animation, you can then reload the main scene file, select load from scene, then essentially inject your animated character in place of the non-animated copy. Use duct tape. The previously mentioned tip isn't going to help you much if you can't see anything. That's the problem with deleting everything but the character, so how are you supposed to work with that? Duct tape is my answer to this. This is the term I use to describe the following process. With your scene having all the relevant elements visible, Jump into Modeler and make a flat plane. Make it any color or texture you want. You can then use this flat plane to tape it over things such as walls, props, and other non-moving elements of your scene as needed. This allows you to delete your background entirely and focus only on the items in question while still being able to see where your figure can and cannot pass through. In this example, I use this technique to allow this character to avoid walking through a spaceship. If a flat plane doesn't work for you, or you're dealing with an environment that has a very uneven surface, such as a cavern, another technique is to make what is called a proxy. A proxy object is a simplified representation of a full detailed object. So, I can make a duplicate of my background object and delete everything except for what is around the, the character or figure to improve playback. Here, I just used right-click lasso selection, invert selection, then hit delete. Use this technique when simple planes aren't enough. Limit keyframe display. A lot of Lightwave users probably don't realize that the amount of keyframes being displayed in the timeline can have a significant impact as to how smoothly Lightwave runs. Specifically, I'm talking about these little yellow bars at the bottom of the screen. At least for my version of Lightwave, which is 9.6, even just creating a null and baking 300 frames is enough to make playback stutter significantly. To improve playback in this case, simply reduce the keyframe range to something that your system can handle. Here's a tip. If you just want to play back your animation and don't want to fiddle with the keyframe range, just click Lights at the bottom of the Lightwave interface. This works because lights don't typically receive a whole lot of keyframes while animating. And one other miscellaneous tip for IK Booster users. Closing the dope track while working can significantly improve performance. I have no idea why, but it works. MDD your stuff. While this is a standard workflow concept that many animators, regardless of 3D software, use, I'll include this for the sake of completeness. Let's use the characters Rudo and Ivan from this scene in my animated series of Delura as an example. Say we've completed the animation for Rudo and want to work on Ivan now. 
but we want to keep Rudo's motions visible as a reference. This is a paradox, because even if Rudo isn't being manipulated or changed, his rig and any attached controllers, motion modifiers, etc. are contributing to loss of playback speed. By baking out Rudo's animation as an MDD, this will allow us to delete his rig and retain the motions, resulting in a functional, visual reference without the slowdown. Fortunately, Lightwave makes this really easy. First, set the timeline range to encompass the entire duration of the animation. Then, in Object Properties, make sure the character's display subpatch level is set to 1 or 0. Head over to the Dynamics tab, Add Cloth Effects, and under File you'll notice a button labeled Scan Motion. When scanning is complete, save the file to a temporary folder, and that's it. Afterwards, just delete the character's rig and you're good to go. Note, if any separate objects or accessories are attached to your character, you will need to apply the scan operation to each of those items first before scanning the character. Also, before deleting the rig, you will need to unparent any items from the character to avoid deleting them when you delete the rig. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, there are other ways to speed up playback of motion and light wave layout depending on the needs of any given viewer, but the tips I've gone over are the things that I find myself doing the most. Finally, if you have light wave optimization tips that you would like to share or have a better or alternative way to do the things that I've described, please feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear your input. If you'd like to see more Tanadrine Studios tutorials, check out our YouTube tutorials playlist. Thanks for watching.